May 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue never be Hillary Clinton's address ever again. The DNC is pushing hard for people to ignore Hillary's scandals, protect her lawless behavior, enshrine her as the first female president. But the RNC is working equally hard behind the scenes to lay the groundwork for Hillary's downfall come November. Check out their latest Stop Hillary video. We struggled, dead broke. Uh, come on, uh, that was a disastrous comment. This is a tone deaf comment. She didn't struggle. Perhaps only hangs out with millionaires and donors. To make double the money, get us houses. Chappaqua, New York, $1.7 million. Very fancy street in Washington, $2.85 million. We struggled, dead broke. $8 million. So she's not really hurting. The Republican National Committee is responsible for the content of this advertising. Joining me now is research director for the Republican National Committee and co-founding partner and managing director of America Rising LLC, Raj Shah. Raj, hi, how you doing? Doing great. Thanks for having me on today. Of course. Uh, tell me about this Stop Hillary campaign. Well, the RNC, uh, America Rising, other groups have been involved in an effort that stretches back several years to essentially stop a Hillary Clinton campaign. Um, we've been engaged uh, in, in communications out of the RNC for the past year since she's entered the race and in a uh, big and sort of uh, multi-year research effort that has spanned back uh, several years. And, uh, you know, it's involved the deepest and most comprehensive investigation involving a presidential candidate in modern history uh, in terms of a Democratic candidate and the Republican side uh, doing sort of the spade work. And it's involved hundreds of records requests. It's involved a deep uh, investigation of uh, institutions like the State Department when Hillary Clinton was Secretary of State, looking into the Clinton Foundation, potential conflicts of interests. And we've been working uh, hand in hand with a lot of allies and friends to try to develop the playbook that our nominee and our campaign is going to need uh, going into the fall if we're going to win this election. All right, now we saw this video that you put together. There's a couple more. Uh, the bulk of this research that you have, the results of that, are you waiting to release that until it's the general election, until Hillary Clinton is the Democratic nominee uh, versus one Republican candidate? Are you waiting? Well, we have been releasing some things. Uh, we've been sort of watching all of her events, watching uh, the campaign and other act uh, entities, and sort of questioning everything that they are developing, putting out, asserting. Uh, for example, today Hillary Clinton was in Kentucky and she made comments about coal and um, about you know, energy policy in general that are very much out of step with what she tells environmentalists. And that's the kind of thing that we you know, expose at the time and you know, we react to it and we try to tell voters Look, Hillary Clinton says one thing to one audience, another thing to another audience, and it's just one example of why she can't be, can't be trusted. Right, you want to juxtapose her hypocrisy, which you and I have heard a million times. Uh, Raj, my concern here is that historically Hillary Clinton has been Teflon. She's fielded all these accusations, weathered these scandals, and she's still come out, uh, to, she's still come out as the lead candidate, the front runner uh, in the Democratic race. Uh, do you think that releasing these types of things, even if you show the hypocrisy, even if you expose the scandals, is that going to change people's mind about her? Well, I think uh, it can have several, several impacts. First of all, uh, there are going to be voters who are on the fence who don't know who they want to vote for, whether it's the Republican nominee or Hillary Clinton in the fall. This new information that we have might tip them over the edge. Um, and yes, yeah, she's weathered things in the past, but they've taken a toll on her numbers. Um, she has very high unfavorable numbers currently. Um, she would be one of the most unpopular candidates uh, to be nominated by a major party. And it's because she has a lot of credibility issues. We have information which will further those narratives and will continue to raise doubts about her as a potential president. So we do think it'll have an impact, but it's, of course, not in a vacuum. And Hillary Clinton is well known. But I think there's this assumption among her allies and folks in the press, that she's been fully vetted. And that's just simply not the case. Her record at the State Department and afterward, particularly with the Clinton Foundation, simply hasn't been fully vetted. And we're going to see that coming uh, kind of to fruition in the next several months. 
Right, and I think you have a good point about her already. Even though she's well-known, she has about 100% name recognition in our country. Uh, she's not widely liked or highly trusted. There's a new poll from NBC Wall Street Journal. This is 48% of registered voters uh, rated her very poor on honesty. That's an enormous number. But Raj, tell me, if this is an ongoing project, if it's already started and it will continue through the general election, your ultimate goal clearly is to prevent Hillary from uh, attaining the White House. But how are you going to measure results to see if your message is resonating with the American people as you go? Well, I mean, we're going to be seeing if our narratives and if the information that we're putting out there is seeping into the public, right? And so we have survey research on the one hand, we'll be focus grouping material on the other hand, um, and, and seeing whether voters take this information, whether it moves them. Um, but we're already seeing that impact, whether it's the email scandal and, and revelations related to that that the RNC has been involved in, whether it's the Clinton Foundation, these things have already raised doubts. They've already had, uh, you know, taken a toll on her credibility and her numbers. And um, we continue to see some success on that front. We're going to continue to to plug away. And as the voting, as uh, sorry, as voters move toward the general election, and there's a sharp and clear contrast between a Republican and Hillary Clinton, who's going to take them in a similar direction that we've seen over the last eight years. Um, we think that that choice is going to put these doubts into stark contrast. All right, let's talk about some of the issues then. You can give your analysis of how strongly you think the American people feel about this, not just Republicans, not just issue-oriented voters, but as a whole, the general public. So some of the issues sure. that Hillary Clinton has come out the strongest for or against, we'll start with her gun stances. She's very anti-gun. Uh, she favors bans on assault weapons. She favors a national registry of some sort or another. Uh, clearly, this is an issue that for Second Amendment aficionados or those who uh, want their concealed carry permit, those into defense issues, that's a very important issue. But the general public, the majority of the American people, do they care about that? Well, I do think that, you know, the Second Amendment is an issue that animates, you know, certain voters more, more so than others. But I do think that you see polls uh, nationally where a majority, if not a plurality of voters, um, view uh, more gun control is not the answer to uh, whether it's uh, gun violence or other related issues. And they don't think that the direction the Democrats want to take us in is the right direction. And so I do think it will resonate. It will certainly resonate with certain sectors of voters and certain groups where we can communicate on a more uh, individualized basis. And I think it can have an impact, absolutely. Places like Ohio uh, and, and other swing states, there are going to be a lot of voters moved by that issue. Right. Maybe that's why I care about it so much, because I'm originally from Ohio. But Raj, another issue that I care about um, very much that I feel like a lot of the American people are either tired of hearing about, they don't know the facts, uh, or the media is just shielding them from the truth is Benghazi. I mean, as you know, this was the first killing of a United States ambassador in 30 years. Uh, and instead of taking responsibility for it, instead of trying to get to the bottom of what happened when she was Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton instead testified in front of Congress and asked, what difference does it make? This, to me, is a, dis a disqualifier for president. She shouldn't even be running. People should be outraged. Why haven't we heard more about this even than we have? Well, I do think that this is an issue that speaks to Hillary Clinton's style of leadership. It's really a dramatic case study. You have a situation where requests for security were denied uh, for the months leading up to the attack. You have this fatal attack, and who is the first person that was out there blaming this attack on a YouTube video? It was Hillary Clinton. She put out the first public statement, and she's continued that narrative for weeks and months uh, afterward and continues to blame this video years afterward. She's actually lied to the victim's families and made, um, you know, essentially said that the video was to blame and now says, well, she never really said that, and those who are claiming that she did... Um, are not telling the truth. And so this really speaks to her character, speaks to her leadership style, and it certainly is an issue we're going to be talking about uh, going into the fall. It is a great case study in Hillary Clinton's version of leadership. Right, and it's also a great case study in the fact that she can lie and get away with it. Now, in your research, Raj, have you, what have you discovered about uh, the rise of Bernie Sanders? Has this protected Hillary Clinton because he won't attack her on so many of, the, on so many of her vulnerabilities? Uh, or has is this, is this made her race harder because she didn't expect any opposition? Well, I think unifying the Democratic Party is going to be a lot harder for Hillary Clinton than it was for, say, Barack Obama in 2008. And the reason why is you have a disenchanted base. You're seeing voter turnout um, drop from the 2008 election cycle. So voters are not excited. 
And the gap between Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders is less about personalities and more about issues. This is ideological. And so the diehard Bernie Sanders voters who have now been animated to his cause, how is she going to rally them uh, to her cause? Because she is the one who has the deep Wall Street ties and won't announce her paid speaking transcripts. She's the one who has a super PAC. She's the one who, on when on the issues that relate to big money and politics, seems to be the vote uh, seems to be the candidate that liberals and liberal activists and supporters of Bernie Sanders can't trust. And the question is, can she actually put the coalition back together again? I think it's going to be a challenge, and it's going to follow her throughout the general election. She's going to be struggling.